Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, and I'm your mentor for current affairs. I hope that you all are enthusiastic to learn something new in this video. So let's begin the journey. But before that, let me inform you that this is our mobile app. You can download it from the Google Play Store. You can explore what we are going to offer you on this application. So here are some of the features of the app it will be more fun for you if you explore the app uh, on your own so download it and try your hand at it now before discussing the questions let me tell you that there are three channels through which you can connect with us the mobile uh, you can call us from monday to saturday 9 to 6 pm and the mail which you can write anytime because the mail will be resolved uh, from 9 to 6 pm monday to saturday and this is our main website which you can scroll for our courses Besides this, we have one more website, website which is discussion. Let me write it down. Discussion.anujindal.in. So guys, here you can post your queries and we are going to resolve them directly. Besides all these features, we have Telegram channel as well. And on that Telegram channel, I have already provided the PDF of this session. So you take a pause download the pdf keep the pdf beside you so that you can understand the content better so now let's begin with the first question i hope that all of you are ready okay so the first question is which broadcaster was given the responsibility of broadcasting the events organized under the guardian ring program so we have five options out of these five options dd india is the right answer first of all what is this program and when was it organized? So let me give you a background of it. Then we will move into the details. So it was organized on the International Yoga Day. And it is the eighth edition of this day, which is being celebrated in 2022. And yoga for humanity is the theme for this year. Now, besides this, let me also inform you that this video combines the current affairs of 23rd and 24th June. So you don't have to worry about the missing video. Yesterday, I could not take the session because I was not very well. That's why I, I am taking the session today. So don't worry about the current affairs of the previous day because they are covered here. Okay, so I hope that you have understood the background of Guardian Ring program. Now let's understand it in detail. So just have a look at this because we are going to discuss it in detail. Guardian Ring program highlighting one song, one. Okay. So the basic idea of the Guardian Ring program, the sun is one, it rotates from east to west. All the countries welcome the sun with yoga. And one of the most, I would say, prominent yoga asans for welcoming the sun is Surya Namaskar, right? So all of the people who are uh, residing in the countries from east to west of the earth, they welcome the sun by performing yoga. And this is how one sun and yoga are, connect, are connecting the people of these different countries. Therefore, yoga is uh, acting as a tool for India to boost its international relations as well. Okay, so this is one of the examples of the soft powers of India. And this highlights the solidarity among countries and the connecting power of sun and yoga so this is reinstating the concept of one sun one earth so on this basic concept we are developing the one grid as well okay across many nations so i hope that you all are aware of the fact that one international solar grid is being planned by international solar alliance right now it is still in the uh, uh, in the planning stages only right now we are not uh, implementing that project Moving ahead, so under this guardian ring program, or basically what we can say that on the occasion of yoga day, 80 Indian missions, or basically Indian embassies across 80 countries have organized the yoga events. And those yoga events were broadcasted live by DD India. And this organization of events across 80 countries, this is referred to as the guardian a ring program and guardian ring program in itself is nothing but the these 80 events that was that were organized by the indian embassies or indian missions in different countries i hope that now you have understood the entire concept now just remember 
Didi India was the one which got the right to uh, broadcast it live. And in 80 countries, the events were organized. And Japan, the land of rising sun, was the first country where uh, the event was organized. Okay, so from Japan onwards, it began. Now, guys, apart from this, Prime Minister has also given award for uh, uh, award to the company and the individual to the organization and the individual who have done a very meticulous work in promoting yoga. So, in the individuals category, Riku uh, Sanghasena from Ladakh and Marcus Rojo Rodericks from Brazil. These two people have got the award. And from organization category, the Divine Life Society from Uttarakhand and British Wheel of Yoga from UK, these two organizations have got the award for the year 2021. Okay. Now let's move on to the question number two, which is the latest state to join the One Nation, One Ration Card program. So guys, here the right answer is Assam. Assam has become the 36th state, which means that by now, this one, one nation, one Russian card program is implemented across the nation. Okay. So, this program was initiated in August 2019 and the basic purpose of it is to make the Russian card interoperable so that the migrants worker who migrate, for example, to Delhi from Bihar, from Uttar Pradesh, from Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, etc. So all the people who are coming to Delhi would be able to take their ration by using the similar ration card, the same ration card that they were using in their home state. This is the meaning of making the in ration card interoperable, right? So now in all the states, across all the UTs, across the entire nation, the ration, one nation, one ration card scheme has become operable, okay? So now understand this through this picture, you have these kinds of ration cards and all these ration cards have a different meaning because uh, uh, these ration cards have different categories but we do not have to go into that right now uh, this is a part of your government scheme so I hope that you have covered it there now let's understand it that these are your ration cards and this is the POS point of sale machine that is there at the fair ration shop or your uh, ration shop okay so by using these cards in the POS machine, now the uh, POS, sorry, now the Russian shop operator would be able to know your status uh, and uh, your operability or your applicability under the Russian scheme. And after knowing that, the Russian shop owner would give you the ration. So basically, this barcode will now be able to help you get the ration by giving all the information to the shop owner about your applicability and etc etc okay so this is how the ration card has been made interoperable and the food grains are distributed under the national food security act of 2013 moving ahead where is the center of excellence in the field of communication disorders established so guys it has been established at mysore and recently prime minister narendra modi on his visit to bangalore has visited uh, has inaugurated this center okay now you also need to learn that this center is located at the campus of all india institute of speech and hearing located at mysore okay so this is the news and also remember that this uh, sorry this center of excellence in the field of communication disorder was approved in 2013 only okay so it uh, it was built and right now its inauguration has been done. So it was built and operated, but still its the inauguration was done by the Prime Minister. Okay, moving ahead, which state has signed an MOU with educational tech company by Juice to impart quality education to students of class 6th and 10th in government schools? So here Andhra Pradesh is the right answer. The basic purpose of it is to give uh, quality education by using the audio-visual aids that Baijus is an expert of. Next question is, which country has announced to launch UPI and Rupee card in the country? So guys, it is France. So, France has announced to launch uh, UPI and Rupee cards in the country, which is again a very big achievement for India. And remember, 
France is the first country from Europe to adopt UPI and Rupee as of now. Now remember, in order to implement this, an MOU was signed between NPCI International Payments Limited and LIA. It is a France-based payment services provider. Do remember the name of LIA. Okay. Now understand the expansion of UPI so far. So US, Japan, Singapore, and uh, we have France. Okay. So in the West, East, North, and South. In all the four directions, we have spread our UPI and Rupee. So these are the four countries which have <coughs> sorry, adopted UPI and our Rupee card. Now, the countries which have only adopted the UPI so far are Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Malaysia, and UAE. Okay, so these are the four countries which are very near and dear to us. These countries have adopted only UPI so far, but we need not to worry. Definitely, rupee is also going to make its foray into these countries. So this is also uh, an indication of internationalization of our technology. So I hope that by now you will be able to remember the countries where we have already spread our wings. Um, okay, so everything is clear. Now, do remember that sixth edition of Viva Technology 2022 event was organized in Paris some days back, and in that event, India was recognized as the country of the year. So, this is another very uh, big achievement for India. Next question is. A treaty of friendship, good neighborliness, uh, neighborliness and cooperation was signed between which two countries? So here, Algeria, Spain, Morocco, both A and B, both B and A and C. So here the right answer is option D. So Algeria and Spain have signed. Okay, so let me just uh, explain the news with the help of the map. So Algeria and Spain have signed this treaty. Uh, which was signed in the year 2002 to maintain the friendly relation. Now, when uh, with the treaty being suspended by Algeria with immediate effect, what would be its implication on this map? Basically, the conflict is a little bit old. Now, why are we understanding this? Guys, understand this point that now geopolitics has even entered the parliament. We are discussing the land, uh, the border strategies across Pakistan and China border. We are also discussing the uh, geopolitical relations in the parliament. So why not in RBI? What, you cannot expect RBI to stay out of the international or geopolitical uh, arena. Okay, You can expect uh, that the RBI panel in the interview or in general, in your examination, you can expect any question around this. Okay, so. First of all, let's know some basics of this treaty. So it was signed with Spain. It was signed in 2002 to maintain the economic, uh, financial, social, every kind of relation between Sp uh, Spain and Algeria. Now, with the suspension of this treaty, Western Sahara dispute may arise. Now understand this thing that in 1884, Spain colonized this Western Sahara. In 1975, Spain retreated from this region at the moment since 1975 this is the disputed region because morocco algeria and mauritiana mauritiana all these three countries are claiming sovereignty over this region however in 1975 only un passed a referendum according to which this country has no right over this region so now the tussle is actually between morocco and algeria 80 percent of this region 80% is owned by Morocco and 20% is under the control of Algeria. Okay, that is the present situation. And Spain is in the favor of Morocco, that Morocco should occupy this entire region. So, uh, after getting upset from this support that Spain is extending to Morocco, Algeria has withdrawn 
from the treaty that we have just talked about. So that is the entire history, that is the entire present. Now, what would be the future of this entire action? So the future is that Algeria is one of the major gas suppliers to Spain. And now with this decision, the gas supply, the gas export to Spain would also get affected. And because of that, inflation in Spain might get increased. Plus, the dispute around the Western Sahara region would also get uh, accelerated because now the ex-colonizer of this region has moved out of this entire uh, scene. Actually, it is not Spain, it is Algeria which has moved out of this entire scene or basically the Treaty of Friendship. Now, guys, have you wondered why are they so inclined to take over Western Sahara? What is it in this region? You need to understand that ev eventually everything comes down to money or economy. So this region also has some economic significance. So let me tell you that it is a very rich region in phosphate. Phosphate and uh, fresh water is also there. Therefore, fisheries is one of the major sources. So these are uh, one of these one of the economic incentives for which these countries are wanting to take Western Sahara. So that's all, guys. I hope that you have interested this short. Uh, you have uh, liked this short story. Can any one of you tell me the name of this short passage of water? This is known as Strait. The short pathway of water is known as Strait. And what is the name of this particular Strait? This is your question. Tell me in the comment section. Moving ahead. When was the BRICS Business Council established? So guys, in 2013, it was established uh, in South Africa. So recently, BRICS Business Forum was organized by the BRICS Business Council. And uh, at the forum, Prime Minister has announced that India's digital economy has the potential of becoming a $1 trillion economy by 2025. Okay. Apart from this, uh, Prime Minister Nar Narendra Modi has also said that this year, India is expected to grow at 7.5% of interest rate, which is, uh, again, the highest in the developing economy. So these are the present situations. These are two present uh, statements made by Prime Minister. And understand this point that BRICS Business Council was established uh, by the BRICS nations in 2013 in order to boost the business cooperation, okay? Cooperation among the industrialists and the government. So the basic purpose of this council is to boost the business among the BRICS countries. Can any one of you tell me the theme of BRICS 2022 summit? This is your next question. Okay, so now let's move on to the question number eight for today. How much gold was recycled in India in 2021 as per the World Gold Council Gold Refining and Recycling Report? So guys, the right answer here is 75 tons. And, and India's position is fourth in the world in terms of recycling of gold. Okay, so this is a very good position. Now let's have a look at the facts of this report. So first of all, World Gold Council is located in London. Do remember this one. And according to this gold refining and recycling report, China is at the first position in terms of recycling of gold because it recycled 168 tons of gold in 2021. After China comes Italy at the second position, 80 tons, and then we have USA at the third position with 78 tons. And uh, below US, we have India at 75 tons with 75 tons of recycling. And as far as gold refining is concerned, so the capacity of refining has increased by 1500 tons okay, in 2021 from 300 tons in 2013. So this much is the increase in the refining capacity. The next question is, according to the official data, RBI has incurred more cost on printing the bank notes in the denominations of 20, 50, 100 and 200 in FY22. On which note, the increment in the cost was the highest at 23% in FY22. So here, guys, the right answer is rupees 50. Recently, an RTI was filed. And in response to that RTI, this data was revealed. 
So according to the data, RBI has incurred more cost on printing the notes this year, this year as in FY22, okay. So uh, the, the, the price for 500 rupee note has remained unchanged and the rupee 50 note has incurred the highest cost. Basically the increment in the cost was highest in 50 whereas it was lowest in rupee 20 note at 1%. However, you don't need to remember these exact percentages. This much fact that rupee 50 had the highest increment and rupee 20 had the lowest would be, uh, would be sufficient for your preparation. Okay. Now, this information was given by Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Limited. Okay. So, this is the organization which is responsible for the note printing. Selling price of the note. Basically, I will come to this. Once I tell you the uh, entire scenario, so guys, here you can see the denominations, and here the price of 2021 to 2022. No need to remember these prices, okay? It is just for your information and for your understanding. So, selling price, which I was telling you in the previous slide, selling price is basically the price, the cost at which the uh, Mudran Limited Company sells the notes to RBI. Okay, so this is the selling price. But how many notes? 1000 pieces of notes. Okay, so at price, the price at which the Mudran Company sells 1000 pieces of one denomination to RBI is the selling price. And this price is the selling price of 1000 pieces of 10, 20, and so on. Okay, I hope that you have understood it. And now you can clearly see the increment in the cost over the year. Okay, so 2020, 2021, 2021 to 2022. However, again, we need not to go into each and every denomination. Again, the highest and lowest would suffice. I have already told you 50 was the highest and 20 was the lowest. If you see uh, that in the notes of 2000, the cost is not there. Okay, the cost is not applicable. For 500 rupees, the cost has not changed. Okay, and for other currencies, the cost has marginally changed. So that's the entire news all about. Again, don't uh, try to mug up all the facts that were given in the picture. Now let's have some information about the printing of notes in India, because this is uh, again important for us to know. So I have already told you that this Bharatiya Mudran Limited prints the notes and it is the wholly owned subsidiary of RBI and it owns two printing presses and other two are owned by the government. Okay, so two are by the RBI through the, okay, through this organization and these two, two printing presses are owned by the security printing and Minting Corporation of India Limited. So government owns these two presses through this organization, which is the wholly owned company of the government of India and RBI owns it through this. The two printing presses which RBI owns are located at Mysore, Mysore and Salboni. Salboni is in West Bengal and the two presses which the government owns are located at Nasik and Devas. Devas is in Madhya Pradesh. Okay. Apart from this, I have told you some days back that India has four uh, coin minting presses as well. So the coin minting offices are entirely owned by the government of India and they are Noida, located at Noida, Mumbai, Kolkata and Hyderabad. Hyderabad has two offices. Okay. So do remember, this is a very basic uh, information about coin and note printing in India and you as the aspirant of RBI Sabin Abad, you are required or assumed to know this much of information. Okay, so try to memorize it. Moving to the last question, who has been appointed as India's permanent representative to the United Nations in New York? So here, uh, Ruchira Kamboj have been, uh, has been appointed as the uh, new permanent uh, ambassador of India to the United Nations and she is going to succeed T.S. Murthy and she is Ruchira Kamboj. 
so on that note guys i would like to end today's session i hope that you have enjoyed the session and if there is something that you did not understand you feel uh, something about uh, if you feel uh, anything that was not explained well or if you have any feedback you can mention it in the comment section below thank you so much guys for watching the video